Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the maxillary second premolar. So what we are going to discuss in this session, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of maxillary second premolar. We are going to discuss the number of these tooth in various tooth numbering systems. And we will discuss the landmarks that are present on the maxillary second premolar. So watch this video till the end. The calcification of this tooth, it begins by the age of two and a half, two to two and a half years. And the completion of enamel is around the age of six to ten, seven years. This tooth, it emerges into the oral cavity by the age of 10 to 12 years. And if you add plus two, then the root completion is around the age of 12 years. Now, in the universal numbering system, the number of the maxillary second premolar, it is four. For the right maxillary second premolar, for the left, Premolar, this is the left premolar and the number is 13. So number starts from 1 from the third molar and in a clockwise direction. So the number is 4 and 13. Now in the palmar notation system, the number of the maxillary second premolar, it is, it is 5. This five, it indicates the number and this shape, it indicates it is a upper maxillary or the maxillary quadrant of the right side. The same number is five and this shape, it indicates that it is a maxillary quadrant of the left side. Now, what is the number of this tooth in FDI notation system? So in, this is the maxillary second premolar. This is the maxillary second premolar. So number of this tooth is one five. One indicates that it is the right maxillary quadrant and five it indicates the tooth number. Similarly, on the left side, two indicates the quadrant number and five it indicates the tooth number. Two means it is the maxillary quadrant of the left side and five means the tooth number. This tooth, it closely resembles the first premolar. So this is the second premolar and for comparison, you can also see the picture of the maxillary first premolar. The maxillary second premolar, it is less angular from all aspects. So it do not have very sharp angulations, so it is generally it is rounded uh, from the buccal aspect, from the occlusal aspect, and from the lingual aspect. It is more rounded. This tooth has a single root. The crown of the maxillary second premolar it is smaller, cervical occlusally. This is a cervical line, so cervical occlusally, and mesiodistally. So the tooth, it is smaller in these dimensions as compared to the first premolar. Now from the buccal aspect, the buccal cusp is not as long as the first premolar because as I described already, this is a cervical line and this is the cusp tip. So cervical occlusal uh, dimensions, it is less. So the buccal cusp is not as long as the, as the first premolar. This cusp tip, it is less pointed. If you compare it with the cusp tip of the maxillary first premolar. So this is the mesial cuspal slope. This is the mesial side. And this is the distal side. So this is the mesial cuspal slope and this cuspal slope, it is shorter if you compare it with the distal cuspal slope. Opposite is true for the maxillary first premolar in which the mesial cuspal slope, it is larger. Now, in this tooth, the maxillary second premolar, 
the crown and the root they are thicker at the cervical portion so this is the cervical portion of the crown and this is the cervical portion of the root so in this area the crown and the root are thicker as compared to the teeth that are present anterior to it like first premolar and canine now this is the buccal ridge if you remember these are the two faint developmental depression mesial developmental depression on the buccal side and distal developmental depression on the buccal side so these developmental depressions are faint and the buccal ridge it is also not very prominent as compared to the maxillary first premolar as you can see right now on your screen so from the lingual aspect the lingual cusp of the second premolar it is longer as compared to the first premolar therefore very little occlusal surface is visible and small portion of the buccal cusp and the cuspal slopes they are visible from the lingual aspect for comparison purpose you can see the first premolar now on your screen uh, you can also see the remaining of the features from the lingual aspect they are very similar now the cusp of the second premolar they are shorter as compared to the first premolar because of the less cervic cervico occlusal height of the crown the buccal and the lingual cusp they are nearly at the same level it is very slightly the lingual cusp is very slightly shorter than the buccal cusp in the first premolar the lingual cusp is very short as compared to the buccal cusp tip there is greater distance between the two cusps it means that there is more buccolingual width of the crown as compared to the first premolar so the buccolingual width of the crown is more now in the first premolar if you remember on the marginal ridge there is a developmental groove called mesial marginal developmental groove so in second premolar the mesial marginal ridge it is smooth with no developmental depression on the crown only a shallow developmental depression is there in this area you can see on the root surface but otherwise there's no developmental depression on the crown surface so on the distal side the de root depression it is deep so this is the root depression that is present on the root surface and this developmental depression it is deep as compared to the depression that is present on the mesial surface of this tooth otherwise there is no extraordinary feature that is present from this aspect the outer surfaces of the crown this is the outer these surfaces of the crown they are more rounded as compared to the first premolar so the tooth it appears more oval in shape as compared to angular shape of the first premolar so for the comparison now you can see the first premolar occlusal surface which is more angular in nature angular in outline this is the central developmental groove and this central developmental groove it is shorter as compared to the central developmental groove of the first premolar there are some supplementary grooves that are radiating from the central developmental groove so you can see these supplementary grooves but these supplementary grooves they are very small and they give the crown a, a wrinkled appearance this is the triangular ridge but these triangular ridges they are small as compared to the first premolar so this is the buccal triangular ridge and this is the lingual triangular ridge and it's also from a transverse ridge they are fossas this is the mesial triangular fossa and this is the distal triangular fossa on the occlusal surface so thank you very much for watching this video if you like this video please give give us a thumbs up if you have any questions please do ask in the comments thank you very much for watching this video and stay blessed